All right, hello all my grots and gits. Welcome, welcome. Super excited to have everybody here. And I hope you're all having an amazing freaking day because amazing days are the best types of days. So I was rock and rolling today and I was looking at what could I really do to uh, to create a little bit of engagement. And one of the things that people are always asking me questions about is how the heck do you build a super effective list for Warhammer? So I recently came up with some stuff that was freaking mind blowing. And I got to be honest with you, um, <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it. And I wanted to share it with some people. But I figured what might be even more important than just sharing a specific list with you guys is how I go through list. And right now I'm actually starting to plan for a big tournament I'm going to. And I figured, hey, what better time to teach you guys how I go through list building than to just do it live for you as I'm trying to build for a big tournament. So there's a big one coming up towards the end of uh, end of March called GothCon, and it's going to be happening in Sweden. And there's going to be basically all Team Sweden is going to be there, more or less all of Team Norway is going to be there. There's going to be a bunch of top players. It's going to be a big, big tournament. And I really want to be more active going to live tournaments. I'm very active on TTS, but I want to be more active going to live tournaments. Uh, this year. So that's kind of my goal. So right now I'm trying to figure out exactly what, what list I want to build. And whenever you want to start building a list for a competitive play, there's a couple things that you need to identify. One, you got to identify what type of terrain are you playing on? Because if we're playing on games workshop terrain, we're going to be playing on a, like we're going to be building a very different type of list than if we are playing on say WTC style terrain. So it's really important that you guys identify that, uh, that particular little thing. Because if you haven't, then eh, you don't want to be running Triple Land Raider on. Uh, <laughs> you certainly don't want to be running Triple Triple Land Raider on WTC terrain. Although Double might be really good on GW terrain, based off of what you're doing. I'm just gonna post that we're live here. Uh, yeah. So that's basically basically it. So I'm going to take a couple of different armies today and I'm going to start building lists. If you guys are in the chat, I'm super happy to answer any questions, just like always. Uh, if you want me to build you an entire list on stream, uh, I, I am actually going to ask for a super chat for that <laughs> just because that is actually quite quite a bit of work and it will kind of detract from my presentation here today. But I am super happy to help you guys out with things that you want. Mr. Ian's in the chat. Super happy to see you, buddy. So basically, guys, you know who I am. I'm looking at going to this tournament. It is generally speaking, it's fairly WTC stylish terrain. And I'm figuring out what army when I, what do I want to bring. So what I'm going to do is I've got like four choices of armies that I want to bring to this tournament. Well, really five choices. So I'm going to build one type of list to for each of those armies. And the first one I want to start with is going to be the orcs because everybody loves orcs. Orcs are freaking awesome. You guys know I love the orcs. They're one of the most fun freaking armies in the game and they are one of the better armies in the game right now. Um, there have been some recent <laughs> tier lists that have been released that I don't necessarily agree with. Well, some people have placed them, but that's okay because today I'm going to build a tournament orc list, tournament wall list. And when you're building your, an army, there's a couple things to consider. I know I'm playing on WTC. So, oh yeah, Mr. Mass Bro Effect in the chat. Uh, yeah, we've got a disgusting Blood Angel list that will be coming up. Don't worry, but I'm gonna, I gotta get started with the orcs because <laughs> the orc boys have some serious gameplay to, to, to go with. So you gotta figure out how the heck are you going to be scoring points. So first off, when you're making your list, are you building a tactical list or are you building a fixed objectives list? For me personally, I think um, the armies that are going to win are the ones that aren't going to be upset because no matter what you do, when you go to a tournament, you're going to make some mistakes. So you need to build an army that is forgiving of mistakes. So I like having the flexibility of either being able to go tactical or being able to go fixed. So that is one of the biggest strengths of the orcs. So I need to know what happened to the orcs and what do I know is going to be guaranteed in my list. There's just, there's always basically every army, you're going to have a few auto includes. So I know for a fact when I bring orcs, I'm bringing Mazrog. I'm just going to go and throw them right in. No problem. That's 194 points. I know I'm spending regardless of anything else that happens. Then I know I'm going to bring, bring bad ruck and the gets. So let me just go ahead and add in bad ruck and the gets. Cause if, if I don't do that, then, uh, you know, I'm not playing to win. And I promise you, I am playing to freaking win. <laughs> Uh, let's just go ahead and hide those configurations. So let me put in these flash gets here. Uh, where are you, dirty girls? Dirty girls. Dirty girls. Cool. So I'm going to go just up them to 10 because if you bring bad rec, you're bringing 10. Now, currently in the orc meta, we just recently got an interesting transport choice called the battle wagon. And the battle wagon is a total freaking beast. And... That beast is uh, called the Battle Wagon. So the Battle Wagon is essentially a 160 point land, land raider. 
So that's I'm, I'm going to have a battle wagon because it definitely gives orcs a portable staging area. And while it certainly can die, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to kill. So you're just going to take up all the options there. And you can't take a kill cannon because I'm going to want to put models inside of it. So I'm going to run a battle wagon. So this puts me at the core of my army is going to be 400 and, or 625 uh, points. Now I also know I need at least minimum one truck. So let me throw that truck in because the gets have to have a truck. And I can pretty much guarantee I'm going to need one more for another unit as well. All right, so I've got two trucks. I've got Badrock, Mazrog, and 10 Flash gets in a battle wagon. So that is 755 points. How do I flesh this bad boy out? Well, I'm going to flesh it out with some knobs because knobs are super important right now. And the idea I have for this list is I'm going to kill everything. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and put in three units of knobs. I'm going to make sure that everyone, that they're power claws because power claws are way better than um, big choppers. I'll just duplicate that. And then I'm also going to put in a 10 man because I think I want to go knob city here. So my entire idea for this particular list is I'm going to have um, one 10 man and two five man of knobs. So if I'm going to have 10 man, the 10 man is probably going to run in a battle wagon. And then I'm going to have two five mans that can run inside of a truck. Uh so people have a few questions here. So let me answer these real fast. So the Defrola, I am actually running the Defrola on the battle wagon. I like it. Uh, I find it's not that hard to maneuver the battle wagon anyway when I have it. So I'm 100% bringing it. Some people might not want it because it might make it a little bit harder to find. Sure. Even squinting very hard is not world eaters. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Sorry, world eaters is probably not the best list ever. That's not what. That's not the one I'm gonna build. And uh, we are getting started with the ortho orc list here. So right now we've got ten knobs, five knobs, five knobs. We've got the battle wagon, and um, then we gotta flush it out. So I have to be able to score points. So let's put some storm boys in. I'm gonna put two units of storm boys in, and I'm gonna make sure they both have a power claw. And guys, this list builder I'm using, by the way, is called New Recruit. It's so much better than uh, some of the other list builders out there. It's much more. Much easier to use. It's much more intuitive. They have all your options on them. It just it works freaking awesome. I, I love it. So I'm going to run double storm boys. I'm not going to bring squig hogs in this. So I'm going to need a way to handle monsters. Well, there's a couple different options that I can handle monsters with. One is I can bring that beast boss with snagas. Or I could uh, try to double up. The Masrog can kind of handle monsters, but he's not like amazing at it. Knobs can kind of handle monsters as well, but they're also not amazing at it. So I need something else that, that can really really hit the monsters so i think what i want to do is i want to drop in a unit of snagas with a beast boss so let me throw in a beast boss he's 100 points and i'm going to throw in a unit of beast snagas so he's going to lead the beast snagas so now what i can do is i can run the beast snagas with the boss and the knobs inside the battle wagon and that'll work and then i can run two new units of five knobs inside one truck and then i can run the other truck with the gets and bad ruck but to lead all my knobs i'm going to need war bosses because we're playing orcs, we need war bosses. All right, let's check these bad boys out. Got to put a power claw, two and three. Oh, we got a super chat from Mr. Dylan Cicero. He just wanted to show everyone some support for running the TTS. Hey, bro, appreciate you so much. Uh, Dylan was actually my first opponent in the TTS event, and he actually did a great job, so I really enjoyed playing him. And I super appreciate you being here, buddy. So one thing I'm thinking about with my orcs is how much points do I want to give away on Assassinate and bring it down? So right now I've got six characters. Six characters is right at the level where basically your opponents can go ahead and choose assassinate, but it's not like an auto include. So I am comfortable at six. I want to avoid going to the seven character mob, uh, seven character level. So right now I have three units of war of uh, knobs with three war bosses. One's leading the ten man, and one's each leading the five mans. I really like it that way because what it allows me to do is it allows me to send my knobs into multiple different directions, so I can go smash people in different areas. I enjoy that a lot. And then I got one unit of beast snaggers with the beast boss. And so that's running in the knobs. Now, I guess just got to flesh this out because this army is basically almost done. I need some uh, Gretchen because how the heck do you play this game without Gretchen? Gretchen are freaking awesome and they are total rock stars. I don't really want to add more vehicles because I don't want to give my opponent the ability to take bring it down against me. Because as it is right now, I'm giving up 10 points on bring it down. I don't really need to give up any more than just 10 points on that. So I got two units of Storm Boys. Let's bump that up to three units of Storm Boys. I got 1830. Uh, let's see here. I think I'm going to have one bonus unit of Gretchen that can be used for move blocking. And then that gives me 
some points. So then, you know what? I actually really think I'm going to pop down. Hmm, that's a tricky thing. What do you guys think? I'm thinking war bikers here. Yeah, I like the war bikers actually. Because they get me at that fast movement unit that can go out and can grab me an area denial or attempting target really quickly. Yeah, buddy, I got, I got two units of grots right here, Will. So I think I really want that unit of war bikers down there. Because they're going to go grab me an area denial attempting target really early. And if they are hidden from line of sight, they're actually pretty resistant to indirect. Because they have the four up armor save, their T6, I can make them minus one to wound. They got that sweet, sweet three, wound, three wounds each. So I, I actually really like the unit of war bikers there. And that basically leaves me with 60 points here to do with as I please. So that is pretty cool. So I got the battle wagon to run, up, to run up the middle. I've got two trucks transporting my knobs, transporting my flash kits. I've got two units of grots, 60 points. What do I do with those 60 points? That's actually kind of a little bit of a tricky one for me. I could throw burner boys down, but I don't really need a unit of burner boys. Hmm. I could put some enhancements on my squads, though. So a third unit of Grats, and then uh, I don't think Follow Me, because Follow Me Lads is going to be 25 points, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so I can't put Follow Me Lads and get Grats, because that's going to put me at 1965 for with Follow Me Lads. Um, although I do really enjoy Follow Me Lads. A third unit of Grats never hurt anyone. So yeah, I think so. I think that's how we go. So we're going to go with third unit of Grats, and then I'm going to be able to rock in uh, Cunning But Brutal on the 10-man. Yep. That works for me. So right here, I've got a beast boss leading up a unit of snagas. I've got a war boss, a war boss, a war boss. And I've got my knobs, 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 storm boys, storm boys, storm boys, war bikers, battle wagon, truck, truck. Now, I like this list. Let me just go ahead and pull up the short view so you guys can kind of see how it all how it all looks in one in one little picture. So you guys should be able to see that pretty you guys can see that on your screens, right? That should work pretty well, I was I would assume. So that is the list that I'm looking at. Now, how could I alter this if I want to make it a little, a little bit different? Uh, one thing that I, th one thing that I think I could do, is I could add a beast boss on Swigsor with Edwapa's Kill Choppa, and that could be another like just hard to kill unit. But I do think I like that beast Nagas. No, I'm gonna keep this list. This is the list. This is this is this is a very solid list. All the infantry can st they can go through walls very easily. So I get to start the ten man unit of knobs and the beast nags inside the battle wagon, and then inside one truck I'm gonna have a un two units of knobs with war bosses, and inside the other truck I'm gonna have the gits and bad ruck. Then I got the five units of storm boys, one unit of three war bikers, and then I got three units of grots. On this particular game, I'm probably generally going to start one unit of Gretchen in strat reserve, and I think the other two will typically start on the board. Sometimes I might start two units of grots in strat reserve. Um, I think that's good. So Ophir Burrock, he's got a he's got a great option. He says I could remove storm boys and I and grots and get death Coptus. You're right, that is absolutely an option, and I did actually consider it. But the problem is that one unit of Coptas is going to be giving up six points to bring it down. And I'm already giving up ten. I don't want that bring it down to be a really good choice for my opponents. So I think I'm going to stick with this. I think I'm going to stick with this. Although, although let's just let's just take a look at it. Let's let's butcher that for a second. Let's let's see what, what happens when I drop the Storm Boys. I drop a unit of Grotz and a unit of Def Coptas. Do I li actually like that? Because I do love me some Def Coptas. You're right. Def Coptas actually give you that sweet, sweet damage three at range, which people just, they're not ready for. They're not expecting when it comes to the orcs. And it can cause big darn problems. So that gets that gets me at 16 points that I'm giving up from Bring It Down. And I'm giving up my 24 on uh, on Assassinate. I don't know if I love that. But I'm pretty happy with it, actually. And actually, you know what? No, you're right, buddy. You're actually absolutely correct about that because now I'm going to drop my kind of but brutal and I'm going to put a follow me lads on my beast nagas. Yep, that's it. That's the correct. That's the key. All right, so I like this list. Let's break it down. And uh, so Adam in the chat, he wants me to know if I can break down um, the roles of the units in this list. So yeah, I think that's going to be really actually beneficial. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got the beast boss and he's got follow me lads and he's running with the beast nagas. He's inside the battle wagon 
with a unit of 10 knobs and war boss. So that battle wagon's job is to roll up into a place where he's relatively safe, where I can stage to release my units at my own desire. The other option is I could run 10 knobs and two units of five. No, actually I can't because that would be... Yeah, no, I, I couldn't do that. So it's going to it's gonna have to be the knobs and the beast boss inside the battle wagon. One truck has two units of knobs. The other truck has the uh, gets. So let's talk about unit roles here and why I took these guys so that I can figure out exactly the way I want to play this list. So the beast boss with the unit of snagas, they are there to go eat a satan or they are there to go eat a doomsday arc that is hanging out, or go kill the Silent King, or go crush a monolith by themselves. They're there to go trade up super, super high, and I give them follow me lads to guarantee they're going to get to where I need them to get. They are total chads, and I really, really like them. I did see someone mention a comment where they were asking why I don't put Cunning but Brutal on the Snagas, or on the Beast Boss, because, you know, you get to activate his fallback and charge, and then he gets to do his thing. Well, the reason why I don't do that, guys, is because, honestly, if that Beast Boss and Snagas don't kill what they go into... They're going to die. <laughs> and so they're never going to have the opportunity to actually use the fallback and charge. So I don't I don't really bother. I just put the, the follow me lads on them to guarantee I get them where I need them to go. Then I got the three war bosses. So basically the beast boss and snaggers, they're there to go kill the big nasty threat. They can also eliminate hordes pretty well too, which is really, really nice. We got Mazrog. Mazrog is the scary boy that a lot of people just don't even try to engage with. Uh, actually, guys, I can't tell you how many games I've played with Mazrog where I just straight up put him on an objective and I said, here he is. And my opponent just gave me that objective the whole game and played for the other two. It's actually hilarious and I love it. So Mazrog gives you a lot, a lot of board control and just the fact that he by himself can, can hold an entire flank. It's kind of nuts. Then we've got 10 gets. So the reason why flash gets are so freaking amazing for the orcs, guys. This is so important. Orcs are so amazing. Sim or, or flash gets are so amazing in orcs. Not because they're actually a great shooting unit. Because they're really, really not. But they are so good in orcs specifically because of their ability to act as a normally decent shooting unit. And that will dramatically change how every other army in the game has to play against us. Because suddenly they can't just walk out in the open... Being like, well, orcs can't shoot us anyway, so it doesn't matter where I move. No. Now orcs can control the battlefield just as well as other people. And they do have a legit scary overwatch. So that's why they're so good here. Um, we got a question that we're, or we got a comment saying that we're lucky that GW didn't touch Moz. I don't know if we're lucky about it. Um, honestly, I don't think Moz should have been touched. Just my opinion. He's not that mobile. He uh, has no range to speak of. His melee is swingy as heck. But he is very tough. So I, I think Maz is very fairly costly, to be honest with you. Triple uh, Zero has a question. He said he came in a bit late, but he's he's asking if we're no longer on the Squig Hog Riders because they're higher. The Squig Hog Riders are still good. I am certainly not saying you can't cannot take Squig Hog Riders. I, I still like them. But if you're going the path of Squig Hog Riders, you're going path of down the path of elite orcs where you do not have a whole lot of units and uh, that's just not the way i really want to be playing orcs right now so this is going to be the list i think this is definitely a, a strong consideration for what i would want to take to either the big tournament or if you guys are playing in our tts tournament this is also something that i recommend you take a look at it's really a pretty darn solid option um actually you know what maybe i can just like Maybe this will be useful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to screenshot these for you guys. And I'm just going to drop these into... Or I don't even need a screenshot. I can just copy these. And I'm going to drop these into the Discord while I'm talking. Um, yeah, that would be a good idea. Let's do that. So I'll just go down to the Orcs section. And I'm going to just drop this in Orcs for you guys. And if you like it, keep it. If you hate it, you know, don't keep it. <laughs> and then I'm going to get on to the next list that I really, really want to work on. So... Um, no, 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 uh, Ian. Ardcase does not limit your transport in the battle wagon. Ardcase does not. The kill cannon limits your transport in the Ardwa in, in the battle wagon. If you take the Ardcase, you can't use the firing deck out of the battle wagon. That's what it does. Yep. Perfect. All right, cool. Just nipping that dumb question in the butt. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Ian. You know I love you. I appreciate your, your questions and comments. So I'm going to move on to the next army that I'm really, really freaking excited about right now. Because I actually kind of love them. And let's talk about us some Death Watch. So we're just going to create this. So if you guys know anything about Marines, I think Death Watch is the army that gets overlooked 
more than everyone. It is so good right now. They have such amazing ability right now. So your Death Watch have the ability to teleport two units a turn or one or one non-kill team unit. And it gives them some really interesting stuff. So if you know anything about Death Watch, I'm just going to go ahead and put down a few units that are freaking awesome. I'm going to put down one Watchmaster. And I'm also going to give myself a Captain because Captains are basically just awesome. So on my captain, I'm going to give him a, oh, I got to make sure I switch my um, detachment here, Black Spear. So on my captain, I'm going to give him the Tome of Ectoclades, because what this is going to do, it's, it's basically going to build our entire army for, for us. So it's going to go ahead and make sure that we get two Oath of the Moment targets in one, in one turn, and both of those Oath targets are going to be getting Old Oath, where I get to reroll Wound Rolls. Now, it is a once-per-game ability, but holy crap, it is, is it strong. It is very, very powerful. I'm just going to drop them in Power Fist because Power Fist are great. Then the Watchmaster. The Watchmaster is going to be my next guy. I'm also going to give him an upgrade called the Teeth of Secrets, which is going to give him plus one to his uh, strength, AP, and damage of his uh, of his weapons, which is going to make him actually quite frightening in melee. Now, he has a super special ability that when he's the Warlord, he gives me a free Vect. A Vect ability, guys. We got, uh, we got a super chat from Ian saying, Tournament Beer Tokens. Listen, Ian. This one's on you, and I really appreciate you, dear sir. <laughs> really looking forward to catching up with some of you guys later this year, whether it's at the War Master or whether it's at some of our GTs we're hosting here in, in Oslo. Guys, hit me up if you want to come out to Oslo for the GTs. We got some. We're gonna have some pretty big ones that are gonna be pretty, uh, pretty robust and awesome here at the largest independent club for Warhammer Forty Thousand in the world, actually here in Oslo, Norway. So if any of you guys are looking to come over, get me a DM, man. I'll, I'll guys, I'll get you hooked up. All right, so we got a captain and we got a watchmaster. Now, one of the strongest units in the entire index for Space Marines in general is that lieutenant with combi weapon, simply because he's a lone op. He gets to move when you move within range of him. He's very powerful. Uh, so I absolutely adore him. So I'm going to drop him in there as well. So these are the three characters I'm going to start with. Then I'm going to put in a unit of Death Watch veterans. So Death Watch veterans, because these guys, if you don't know what they do, ooh, let me explain to you what they do. Um... I need, oh, geez, this is being all tricky, isn't it? Um, hold on, I want one, two, and three on Thunder Hammers, and I want one, two in here, and then I'm going to need another one there. So I want to have, these guys will get to re-roll hit rolls against everyone, which is amazing. There we go. We'll do that. They get to get full hit hit re rolls against your enemy if they are um no, what do you call them Xenos and they get to re roll hit rolls of one against your uh, chaos and your imperial forces, which is very very strong. So that is an amazing ability that we have. There we go. All right, cool. So what we're going to do with this now, and we'll turn this into four. So the, each one of these squads is going to have four heavy bolters that can also be fired as, uh, what do you call them? Um, that can also be fired as uh, heavy flamers. They're going to get to full rerolls to hit roll against Xenos, always in sustained hits. And for Death Watch, I can also increase the AP of their, of their bolt weapons by one, or I can give them extra range. I can also teleport these squads. These squads are also going to have four Death Watch Thunder Hammers, which are going to be Strength 10, AP 2, Damage 3. Remember, re-rolling hit rolls, and it's Dev Wounds. So each one of these squads hits crazy freaking hard. Crazy hard. And the squad that's going to run with my Watchmaster gets advanced and charge, which is very darn important. So I'm going to drop two of those squads in. I'm going to need a way to transport these guys. And what better way to transport them than to drop a Land Raider Redeemer? Um, where are you, Land Raider Redeemer? Ugh, there's so many. There's so many here. But actually, I'm actually going to put down a normal Land Raider. Because normal Land Raiders in Death Watch do something that's they don't do in other armies. Because Death Watch, they have doctrines. So for one turn, I can get everything in my army to have sustained hits one or freaking lethal hits one. So I'm going to give them sustained hits one because that's suddenly a Land Raider that's uh, getting to hit you. And it's re-rolling its hit rolls with those God Hammers, last Cannons. Uh, and it's really searching for those sustained hits. That thing hits really hard, and it's going to transport my guys very, very safely. So I'm going to bring the that Land Raider. Um, 
then I am going to need some more units. So I still love my Inceptors. Everyone hates Inceptors, but I'm going to still bring Inceptors, especially considering the fact that in Death Watch, my Inceptors get sustained hits on their plasma on their plasma executioners which is bananas you have not lived until you've seen a six-man inceptor squad get sustained hits so i'm gonna go ahead and drop those sustained hits i've got another three man of inceptors and what i think i want is i do believe i actually may go with one more death watch veteran squad as well let's go ahead and do that I'm actually just going to copy that one more time. So that's going to put me at 16, 10 points. That's good. So I've got transportation. I've got some hard hitting things. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this just a little bit because I have the ability to teleport these guys. And since I have the ability to teleport these guys, I'm going to make this a little bit nastier. Let me give myself, give me a lieutenant here. Give me an apothecary. Give me some Hell Blasters. That's what I want to see here. Because these Hell Blasters are also going to be able to get sustained. And I'll still get to reroll hit and wound rolls with them. I want to see that. So now I'm sitting at 1755. I've got a 10 man Hell Blaster squad. They're going to be running with a lieutenant and with a uh, apothecary so that they're healing. Uh, and they're also going to be lethal at all times. Actually, you know, I don't even need the lieutenant. Because I have a doctrine where I can give them lethal anyway. So I don't even need a lieutenant. This is gross here. Okay. That still leaves me a lot of freaking points, man. Which still gives me that third Death Watch uh, unit. And then I get some incursors. And so let me just sit back here a moment and think about this. Let's just think about this for just a freaking moment here. Let me pull up this, little list, or this army list for me. Explore. Let's go and look at the shorts. All right. So in this army, I've got a 10 man hell blaster squad and he's going to be led by an apothecary so that they're going to be resurrecting the guys when they die. Now that hell blaster squad gets to teleport. They get to teleport a very, very big deal. I've got a six man inceptor squad. You know what those guys do, but in death watch, I can give them sustained hits on their plasma. I can have another three man inceptor squad that uh, I'm probably going to keep with assault bolters. I've got three units of these Death Watch veterans, and every turn I can teleport two of them. I can give them AP2 on their heavy bolters. One of them has advanced and charge with those thunder hammers, which is going to be re-rolling hit rolls and re-rolling wound rolls when I need it to, fishing for the sweet dev wounds. I've got the Land Raider, which is actually a total badass in this detachment. You know what? I'm also very tempted to drop the Apothecary and turn him into a... I'm tempted. Oh, you know what? No, I'm going to make this even dirtier. I'm going to make this much dirtier. I'm going to go with Death Watch Veterans. I'm going to turn this one into... Let's just delete that one. I want a Calidus. Because with a Calidus, that's going to give me a double vet. Hey, we got Go For It Painton hanging out with us. What's up, buddy? So I'm going to drop me a Calidus because now with a Calidus and my Watchmaster, I'm going to have two vets, which is absolutely bananas gross so any army that's going to be reliant on having a stratagem orcs orcs you really want to spam your <laughs> your minus one to wound get wrecked against this list this is actually going to be quite nasty okay so i grab that inceptor that is going to work just freaking beautifully and then how do I finish this off? I think I'm going to go with, let's change these incursors. We're going to turn them into infiltrators now to give me some deep strike denial. That's going to be awesome. So what this list is basically made to do is I'm going to jump all the way around the battlefield multiple times a turn. And you are never going to be able to pin me down. When I'm ready to connect with you, I'm going to connect with you super freaking hard. And I'm going to be picking you to pieces and shooting. Yes. So I'm giving up. I got five characters in the, in, the, in the army. So assassinate is not a good pick. Oh, we got a question here. Uh, Nathan Burgell wants to ask. He's saying, Josh joining in now. The Calidus is one vector. What's the other? So the other is going to be actually the Watchmaster. So the Watchmaster's data sheet ability is to give him a vet. 
ability. So I get two Vex here. And yes, they are two different Vect abilities. So yes, I can double Vect a stratagem. So if you have a battle tactic, Profane Zeal, uh, for example, and I want to make it cost two CP, yes, I can make it cost three CP. And I will do that. And I will screw that up. And I will screw that up for you. But I'll do it with love. <laughs> Uh, so we got a question from Rodney Forehand. Buddy, this is newrecruit.eu. It is awesome. It is phenomenal. I highly recommend it for all of your list building needs. It is by far the best. So after all this, guys, I think, honestly, I'm just going to finish up. and I'm going to throw down an Eradicator squad. And I'm going to be basically done here. So let me show off what we got. Let me show off what we got. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't want that Eradicator squad, do I? Let's drop him. Oh, I'm 10 points shy of an extra Inceptor squad. Dag nabbit. Dag nabbit. All right. Then I am going to take that Eradicator squad. So let's show off this list here. Let's go and put it in the short form. So here we go. We've got the Apothecary. He's going to be hanging out with the Hellblasters. And, oh, you know, I can even give him a Deep Strike Relic. Because that's the Beacon Angelus. And then I'll just drop the Eradicators and we'll turn them into Eliminators. Done. No problem. That'll fix that. Cool. So check this out, guys. I'm going to tell you the, 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 the secrets to the way this list works, and it is going to wreck people. This is going to be an apothecary. He has the Beacon Angelus, which gives him Deep Strike, which means I can start the Hell of Blasters in Deep Strike, and I can rapid ingress them for free whenever I want. I got the Captain, who has the Tome of Vector Claudius, which gives me a double Vect or a double... Um, a double Oath of the Moment target once per game, and I get to reroll wound rolls as well against those targets. So whatever I want to shoot in those turns dies. Then I've got the Lieutenant with Combi Weapon, who's going to be a lone op, who's going to be able to hold off, move, do all, all the nonsense that he does. I've got the Watchmaster, who's going to hit very hard in melee because he's got the Thief of Secrets, and he gives advance and charge to one of my Death Watch veteran squads. I've got two units of Death Watch veterans, which get to innately reroll all hit rolls against Xenos and reroll hit rolls of one against everyone else. They've got 12 attacks with the Thunder Hammers. Uh, which is strength 10, AP2, damage 3 with dev wounds. And then they've got four heavy bolters in it, which are all, which double as four heavy flamers as well. And then two of the guys in the squads will also have um, invulns. So it's pretty freaking awesome. Then I've got a one unit of eliminators for a scoot and shoot, which is always valuable. I've got, I've already talked about the hell blasters, but they get to for free rapid ingress because of the enhancement I have here. And in Death Watch specifically, they ought, I can give them lethal hits or sustained hits whenever I want which is sick. Then I've got a six-man Inceptor squad, once again, the, with the Plasmas, and those Inceptors will also get sustained hits. Inceptor squads with Assault Bolters for more infantry stuff, which have the inbuilt sustained hits too, but I can give them lethal hits. One Infiltrator squad, and then finally the Land Raider to make sure all my dudes get to where I need them to go. And Godhammer, Last Cannons, and Multimiltas, and Hunter Missiles hit different when they're also sustained hits, one, and you get rerolls due to attacking your Oath of the Moment target. That is disgusting. I've got the Calidus. I get two Vex against an enemy. This list freaking slaps. Absolutely. I like it a lot. So with that, I'm going to get into a list that is going to blow your guys' mind. I worked on this earlier today, and I, I ran it by a few of my friends to see if there were any glaring holes in it. And uh, whoo, it's disgusting. I, I need to try to source this list because I don't own it and I, I don't really want to buy it on short notice. So I need to see if I've got any buddies who I can borrow it from because I want to take it to some GTs and prove its merit. But you guys are going to see something that is um, absolutely nasty. Let me show you here. I think this is the one. No, this is not the one. Let me show Hold on one more time. I just got to open this bad boy up. This is the one I like. Okay. Okay, cool. So check this out, guys. This is the list. I'm going to I'm gonna go through it slowly, but I'm going to read it to you first because you're going to say, what? That sucks. It is Blood Angels, and it is Sons of Sanguinius. Yes. And it is going to absolutely annihilate people. Let me, dem let me explain how it works. First off, you have a Captain with a Jump Pack. He has the Artisan of War upgrade, which gives him a 2-up armor save and plus 1 AP to all of his weapons. So his Power Fist will go to AP 3. His Hand Flamer will go to AP 1. It's not the most impressive. Just bear with me. I've got one Sanguinary Priest with the Icon of the Angel. And if you don't know what the Icon of the Angel does, it's, it's pretty sick, actually. Uh, let me just read it to you here because I want to make sure I get the wording right for you. Icon of the Angel is only 10 points, and it forces any enemy unit that wants to fall back from his unit to take a Desperate Escape Test. And if they're Battle Shocked, subtract one from each of the Desperate Escape Test, which is 
pretty dang scary. Because I get to combo that with the fact that I also am going to take Dante, who will make you take Battle Shock at minus one to your leadership. And then I'm going to have a second Sanguinary Priest. Now, why the Sanguinary Priest? Let me explain the Sanguinary Priest to you. These guys actually give you a five of Fiona Pain and plus one to the AP of your weapons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Commander Dante. And if you don't know what he does, let me show you what he does real fast. So I'll pull him up on screen for you. He's got the Axe Mortalis, eight attacks. It'll be, you know, nine attacks in Blood Angels. Strength 7, 9 attacks in Blood Angels, or Strength 9 in Blood Angels. AP 3, it's actually going to be AP 4 due to the fact that he's got a Sanguinary Priest in his squad. And he's going to hit make the whole squad hit on 2s. So Commander Dante's squad, let me let me break this down for you. He's going to run with 10 Assault Intercessors with Jump Packs. Here's the math on this, guys. Out of this one single squad, when they charge, you're going to get 51 hitting on 2s attacks. I'm going to spend 1 CP to give the entire unit Lance and Lethal hits when they charge. So it's going to be 51 attacks, hitting on 2s, Lethal, Strength 6, AP 2, Damage 1, Lance. Followed by an additional 4 Strength 10, AP 3, Power Fist attacks. Followed by Dante, who's going to have a 9 Strength 9, AP 4, Damage 2, Lethal hits. That's coming from one squad, not to mention all the disgusting mortals that are coming out of it. And then if you want to fall back from them, you're going to have to pass a battle shot or you're going to have to pass a desperate escape test, which is going to be a negative one if you fail a battle shock test, which Dante makes you take battle shock at minus one to your leadership. It is nasty. That unit will chew through anything in the game. That is so much unreasonable damage. You want to put Mazrog in front of that? You want to put... You want to put freaking, uh, what do you call it? You want to put a Satan in front of that? It, they're going to go right through him. Then I've got another unit of Assault Intercessor with a Jump Pack. Well, why, Jonathan? Why would you ever want to take two of these? Well, let me explain. Because the other one is also going to have a Sanguinary Priest with Jump Pack, who's going to give them all plus one AP and a five at Fiona Pain. And they're also going to be running with a Jump Captain. Because the Jump Captain is going to let me do it again. He's going to let me use the CP, the stratagem, again. And this squad is going to be at strength 7 instead of strength 6. And do the exact same thing. So I have two of these bad boys that are going to go in and slap anything. Oh, and just, just for giggles, that jump captain is going to have a strength 11 AP 4 power fist on him as well. And don't forget all the mortals those assault intercessors will do. That is disgusting, ladies and gentlemen. All right, but let's make this a lot worse. Let's make this way nastier. So what I did is I took in Lamartes, and he's going to run the 10-man squad of Death Company Marines with jump packs. If you guys don't know how disgusting this is, let me explain it. So you're going to have 10 Death Company Marines. These guys innately reroll all hit rolls. They have three attacks each, but they're Blood Angels, so they'll be at four attacks each. It's going to be strength, not strength eight. It's going to be strength 10 because they're Blood Angels. AP2, damage two. It's going to be lethal hits, rerolling hit rolls. I can also give them Lance if I really wanted to. And that entire squad is minus one damage with a six up Fiona Pain. Nasty. I likes games wants to say competitive orcs. You're missing some points. Hey, buddy, uh, we already did the orcs list. So we are on to the Blood Angels right now, which I am super freaking excited about this army list. You got to pay attention to how disgusting this thing is. So these guys will punch through anything in the game easily. Then we are going to have another unit of 10 Death Company Marines. Now, these are going to be on, on foot. They're not going to be in jump packs because on foot is a little bit cheaper. And when they're on foot, they get a little bit of additional ability. They get sustained hits, one, if they're below starting strength, and they get sustained hits, two, if they're below half strength. Now, these guys also get full rerolls uh, to hit. They also have those power fists that are going to be hitting at strength 10, AP 2, damage 2. But they're going to be led by Tycho the Lost, who gives them advance and charge. And he also hits quite hard in melee. Which is freaking amazing. Now he's going to be running inside a rhino so I can deliver them. And the rest of the army is pretty much easy to go through. You have three eradicators. They're going to strategic reserve. Pop a big transport. You have a unit of infiltrators because infiltrators are great. You got three units of scouts which are going to give me all the uh, secondary scoring points and the move blocking I need. And then I've got my Kalos Assassin for secondary points and for the Vect. This list slaps. Holy crap does this freaking list slap. It is unbelievable how hard it slaps. I'm going to have to source these models cuz I'm going to have to bring them to a tournament just so I can just so I can like I can show the results of like what this actually does. It's freaking bananas. 
absolutely wild. Now, I, 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 have, I have nothing else to say about it. It's freaking nightmarishly hard. So when you guys are looking for building a, like a unique list and you have your own thought process and you want to get your own creativity out there, one of the things I really, really recommend you do is you look at the units that you like, you look at the armies that you like, and you try to figure out how do you make them work. Even if people say that they're bad, they, they don't work. So the reason why I came up with this is one of my coaching clients, which by the way, if you want, uh, if you're interested in coaching, you can check the description down below. I have a link to my Ko-Fi where you can book coaching calls. Um, he was really into Blood Angels, and he's like, "Dude, I, I just don't want to hop on on the train and, and do the other armies. Like, how do I, how do I play the Blood Angels? That's my army. That's what I want to play. So uh, what did I do? Well, you know, I'm like, well." I'm, the guys hired me to help them with this. So I'm like, let's figure this out. So I go on and I look at what are blood, Angel, blood angels good at? Well, they're good at charging. I'm like, okay, cool. What units are underwhelming in the game, but with good charging buffs, they get better. Assault jump intercessors. I mean, they're made to charge because they get all the mortals, but like they're just underwhelming. It's a chainsword. What is it? Well, then I'm looking at the characters. I'm like, oh, well, this character makes my chainsword AP2. Well, that's pretty cool. And then I look at the strats, and I have a strat for lethal, and I have a strat for lance. So if I can get a strength 6, AP 2, lethal, lance, that's just a ton of attacks. That's pretty nasty, isn't it? So you just build it all out there, man. It is absolutely freaking amazing. So, um, Noah, I, you know, I don't actually know Dark Angels. Thanks for the question, but honestly, I... I haven't taken the dive into Dark Angels, so I wouldn't. I, I'm not probably the guy to build you a list there yet. Uh, hire me for coaching. I'll do my homework and I'll get you a list right pronto. I promise. So that is going to be my Blood Angels. This is absolutely disgusting. If we wanted to modulate it, how would we modulate it? Well, I've got another version of it that I made up. So I want to. Oh, um, yeah, I've got another version of it with a land raider which I find quite, no, that's not the one I wanted to show you. Let me show you this one. Cause I think you guys will get a lot out, a lot of benefit out of um, this. So essentially we're going to have the same general setup. So we're going to have the a capital jump pack, sanguinary priest, Tyke of the lost, La Martes. We're going to have, have only 10 assault intercessors. Uh, we're going to have 10 death company Marines with jump packs. I want to drop Yep, we have 10 Death Company Marines with jump packs, so the Lamartes is intact. We're going to have 3 Eradicators, 5 Infiltrators, 3 units of Scouts. But now, we're actually going to bring a Storm Raven. So the Storm Raven, if you guys don't know what a Storm Raven does, let me explain it. This thing is insane. It is minus 1 damage. Oh, you know, I should just pull up its stats so you guys can follow along. So it is T10. It moves 20 because you're going to put it in hover mode. It's got a 3-up save, 14 wounds. It's minus 1 damage. But what what type of weapons does it have? Well, it's going to have a heavy, a twin heavy plasma cannon. It's going to have two hurricane bolters. So it's going to have 24 <laughs> shots that are going to be twin linked out of it. It's going to have two storm strike missile launchers, which is a strength 10 AP2 damage three shot. And it's got a twin multi melter. So pretty good gun for it's a pretty good gun platform. It's minus one damage. But here is the trick. Here's the trick. Ready for this? This model has a transport capacity of 12 Adeptus Astartes infantry models. Any infantry, so it can transport any infantry. Doesn't matter what the keyword is. Now it does say that each jump pack wolf and gravis terminator take up the spot of two, and centurions take up the spot of three. But it has a transport capacity of twelve adeptus astartes infantry, and not or, and one dreadnought. So this bad boy, this bad boy right here, holy crap! This guy can tr transport infantry and a dreadnought. So what am I gonna do? Well. I'm going to put a five man of uh, Death Company Marines with Tycho the Lost, just like we just explained in the last list. And I'm also going to put a Death Company Dreadnought inside of this thing. Because the Death Company Dreadnought is awesome, but it has no way it's ever going to get into combat. So let's look at the Death Company Dreadnought. So let me explain to you why he's so awesome and why the Storm Raven really, really opens him up. So he's T9, so he's eh, kind of high toughness. He does have a two-up save, which is great because you can stack that with your armor, contempt, and stuff. He only has eight wounds. It's really not that impressive. But when we look at what he does, he has the Black Rage ability, which means he re-rolls hit rolls. Always re-rolls hit rolls. And he also has an ability called the Frenzied Reprisal. And read how bonkers this ability is. This bonkers ability. Oh my gosh. After this unit has finished making its attacks, this model can either shoot as if it were your shooting phase or fight as if it was your fighting phase. So each time an enemy unit targets this model, after it hits the Dreadnought, 
the dreadnought gets to hit it back. So basically, here's here's the way it works. I'm going to charge this dreadnought into a unit of something nasty, like something like, or maybe not even nasty. Maybe I'm going to charge it into a rhino, okay? I'm going to charge it into a rhino, and I'm going to kill the rhino because I get to reroll hit rolls, and I'm a blood angel, so I'm plus one to my attacks. I'm plus two to my strength, so it's going to be strength 14, AP 3, damage 3, weapons that are twin linked. So I'm going to kill this rhino. And then I'm going to consolidate into the, what was inside the Rhino. Let's say it was something garbage like a scout unit. Well, the scout unit is now going to have to punch because you don't get a choice. You must hit something if you're in melee with them. It's going to have to punch my Dreadnought. And since they punched my Dreadnought, my Dreadnought's going to get hit to hit them back. And now my Dreadnought kills that squad because it's still at plus one attack. It's still rerolling hit rolls. And it's still at plus two strength. And it's still rerolling wound rolls. And then it's going to consolidate again. It can conceivably do this infinite amount of times in a single battle round. It is absolutely disgusting. And exactly, Ian, it's also plus two to charge if you drop the smoke. So you can give it plus two to charge against monsters and vehicles as well. But it's slow and it's easy to kill in shooting. But when we load it up in that Storm Raven, in turn one, we move that Storm Raven 20 inches up the battlefield because it's essentially a really, really fast land raider. And being minus one damage, you could even argue that it might be even slightly tougher than a real land raider. So it's much more mobile. You stage it in a position where it can't blow up. So in your turn, you disembark Tycho. You get to advance and charge the Death Company somewhere. And you also get to move that Death Company Dreadnought wherever you need him to be in turn two. It is unreasonably fast. It slaps everything. It is absolutely disgusting. So these are two different versions of the same Blood Angels list I put down. And I really hope you guys can get something out of the out of the, the creative because i've heard anyone talk about blood angels like this and i'm just really actually pretty proud of this so i hope this guys really helps you guys like frame in your head how you can squeeze lemon from a rock because this this is something beautiful that uh that that assault intercessor squad hitting with 51 strength 7 ap2 damage one attacks that's going to be lethal and lanced <laughs> kills everything um yeah so by the way, if you really like this, you could, uh, you know, print up the army and send it to me, and I'll use it on stream for you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's how I'm gonna do it. So I've got time for one more, guys. If you guys have, you know, um, I, I, I said I was uh, taking super chats for this, but not not this one. This is just a freebie. If you guys have a list that you want me to take a look at, sorry, no, I'll, I'll definitely I'll look that up for you. But I just don't know Dark Angels really, so I couldn't do justice for that. If you have a question about a list that you want me to take a look at while I'm here on stream, I'm super happy to do it. Um, this will just be my gift for you guys because I appreciate you hanging out with me. So go ahead and type it into chat. Any, the first one who uh, types in gets it, and we'll just go build a list for you. So while I'm waiting for someone to pop that in there, basically I'm just going to rift here a little bit about the what, my, my list design. You need to design your list to do one of three things, right? You need to design your list to kill. You need to design your list to control the freaking board. Or you need to design your list to just absolutely deny interaction with your opponent. Those are the three different types of building list. What this does is this slaughters your opponent. It slaughters everything. And it also scores really well because it's got all the other points. All right, so Dorian. Dorian's the winner. Dorian typed it in first. He wants to know Imperial Knights for teams. Okay, bud. So in all reality, the, the answer to your question is one that you probably don't want to hear. If you want to take Imperial Knights for teams, what you do is you take Chaos Knights for teams. Because Chaos Knights are just better than Imperial Knights. They just are. Um, but let's figure out how do we do Imperial Knights. So let's do it. I'm just going to open up a brand new one. Imperial Knights. Now, they did get a really cool little update with the new list. And a lot of people aren't actually paying attention to how cool the update was. So if you're taking a look at new Imperial Knights, check this out. Now, you no longer reroll one hit hit roll and wound roll of one now every unit gets to reroll a hit roll and reroll a wound roll per activation and that is a world of difference because what does that mean that means suddenly these armager war glaives that have these huge super meltas uh what are, what are they called uh thermal spears which is two attacks plus skill three strength 12 ap4 d6 melta four now suddenly it's very, very reliable because you're going to roll two dice. At least one is going to be a three on average. And then you get to for free re-roll the other one. And then the wound roll, you're generally wounding everything on twos or threes. Maybe fours if you're shooting at a really high toughness thing. thing. You're going to get one of them. And then with the re-roll, you should get the other. So it becomes a very, very reliable melta. So to be completely honest with you guys, I'm basically starting my list with six. So let me just go and put the melt gun down on and I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Because suddenly, right now, you have enough firepower to kill any tank army in the entire game. 
And the Armored Dragon Warglaives have very high OC, so you're able to steal objectives very easily from them, and they're very fast. All right, what is next? Well, we need some long-range firepower, so I'm going to need to figure out what big knight I want. Because the one advantage that the Imperial Knights do have is they, they have the one the one big advantage they do have over chaos, their Chaos Knights or Cousins, Cousins is the fact that their big knights have really cool abilities that they can pass off to the little knights. And it's better than what Chaos Knights have. But Chaos Knights have better little knights. So one guy who I am a huge fan of, and people give me crap about this all the time, but they're completely wrong, is... Mr. Um, Canis Rex. I'm putting Canis Rex in. Let me explain why Canis Rex. Canis Rex has the ability, which is kind of like the Hive Tyrant, where he gets to do a free C he gets to do a free stratagem once per turn, not per battle round. Which means he can, in his turn, he can use either shoulder the burden or he can use the command CP reroll, and then he can also do it again in his opponent's turn. Well, it would be CP reroll in his in his opponent's turn. And that, that's very, very strong. Um, so I really, really do enjoy that. So Shoulder of the Burden on Canis Rex is pretty awesome because it puts him up to an armor save of 2-up. And he will always have cover. So now he's a 2-up in cover, which makes him much harder to kill. So I really, really like Canis Rex. His shooting is pretty darn amazing. He critically hits on 5s, which means any of his big... Um, Laz Impulsor is going to be just doing crazy damage. He's got D6 shots. It's Blast, Sustained Hits 1, Strength 14, AP 3, Damage 4. It's Critical Hits on 5s. So if you roll, I don't know, if you roll a 3, you're going to get 4 to 5 hits out of it. Because he also hits on 2s. And then in melee, he's got an unreasonable uh, sweep uh, attack. It's either 10 at Strength 10, AP 2, Damage 3 with Sustained Hits, Critical Hits on 5s. Or it's 5 at Strength 20, AP 3, Damage 9, Sustained Hits attacks on fives he also can always fight on death he's just an absolutely behemoth of a monster and the fact that the bondsman ability is still sucks in imperial knights you don't actually have to worry about where he is in the map in relation to your baby knights so you can still run him like this you can still run him here and your baby knights should just go off and do whatever they need so that puts us at 1335 so now we have some choices to make do we put another big knight in um i think generally the thought process is going to be no but let's go ahead and play with the idea that we do want one. The Knight Warden is 100% the one that I'm going to choose if I'm doing that. And I'm going to need to give him the... Uh, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Yeah. So then we're going to need to give him Mythic Hero so that he can give his Bondsman ability to two units. So now he can make two different Armagers minus one damage. That puts us at 1810. And how would we fill that out? We're going to fill that out with a Eversur and a Kalidus. Where's my Kalidus? There it is. And puts us at 1975. I don't, it's too many points. It's too many points. I can't do the Warden. I got to drop the Warden. It's just, I, I can't do it. It's too many points. I want the Eversur and I want the Kalidus because that's going to open up all of our, all of our, play and yeah that's going to open up all of our secondary play so i think i'm gonna i'm gonna I, I need both of them which means i'm gonna fill out the rest of my units with halberns and honestly i like a moirax a lot do you guys know what moiraxes do by the way if you if you don't know what moiraxes do let me show you what this conversion beam cannon does um here this is a conversion beam cannon sustained hits d3 and it's got the conversion keyword which means each time an attack is allocated with this weapon, if the target is more than 12 inches, an unmodified hit roll of 4 plus scores a critical hit. So on 4 ups, that's going to be giving you sustained D3. So it's strength 10, AP 2, damage 3. But with your free reroll that you get on every single unit, suddenly that actually hits very hard. And it gets to clear those AP, those flat 3 at range. So I like that a lot as well. So I'm going to put in a Moirax. That leaves us at 1940. You need one more unit. That sounds like Inquisitorial Henchman to me, and I think you are Bob's your uncle there. So the problem with Imperial Knights right now, guys, especially for teams, is the fact that you do have to have the Inquisitorial Agents. And I think if you're running teams, you're going to want Inquisitorial Agents to run with your Casodes. So I don't think you're ever going to, or I, I say ever, but I don't think you're going to be running this particular 
army right now. Um, simply because, not in teams at least, but individuals, I think we're going to see these guys doing a little bit better. This is probably pretty close to how I'm running it individually as well. Um, yeah, this is, how, this, is how, this, this is how I'm thinking about it. You're going to take Canis, you're going to have two Helverins, you're going to have a Moirax, six Warglaives, Kalidus, Eversor, Inquisitor, Henchman, and Bob's your freaking uncle. That's the way it rocks. Um, Chaos Knights is a better option, but that is Imperial Knights for you, everybody. So that's how we're going to run it. If we get Bondsman back on the Big Knights, that's when we start including the Big Knights again as well. Um, but for now, this is how we are. Guys, this is how I build lists. This is how I think about lists when I'm building it. I really hope it was helpful for you. Uh, I think this is very, very useful for people to go through as an exercise. When you're playing with lists, you don't necessarily have to do what everyone says is the popular thing. I come up with things all the time that is not the popular thing that turns out to be disgusting. So uh, use your own creativity. Think about the combos. Look for the combos. Look for what your army wants to do. I know Blood Angels want to charge. Even though everyone says the codec, the index sucks, it wants to charge. So how can I make it better at charging? Well, I can put those Sanguinary Priests with the Assault Intercessors, and then suddenly they get better AP2, then they're Mortals, and then they're AP. It just stacks upon each other. So really, really think when you're building your list about all of the combinations that exist. Read your stratagems. Think about what units can benefit from those stratagems. It doesn't just have to be the obvious units. That's how you're going to get better at list building. So this was um, basically all for tonight. I really hope you guys had a good time with this. I hope this was really valuable for you. And I will catch you next time. Tomorrow I'll be posting, I think I'll be putting a battle report that I, I recorded the other day. Uh, so it's going to be an in-person battle report. So I think I'm going to get that up for you guys. It'll be Orcs versus... Uh, world Eaters, and I also have another one I recorded, which is going to be Custodes versus Hypercrypt. So check in on both of those, and I think it's going to be really good for all of you. So until next time, crump on my grats and gets.